Okay, so today in economics we're going to discuss optimal currency areas. Remember before last time we talked about fixed exchange rates where <coughs> you basically try to maintain the same exchange rate between your currency and another currency. Well, here's a straightforward way to fix the exchange rate use the same currency. So in the United States <coughs> you wouldn't talk about the exchange rate between Texas and California because <coughs> Texas and California both use the American dollar. So uh, a lot of European countries tried the same thing when they used the euro. So it used to be there was an Italian lira and French franc. Okay, that's what it used to be before the, <coughs> the euro. And so when if you traveled in Italy, you would use the lira as currency. If you traveled in France, you would use the franc as currency. And there was an exchange rate between the two and uh, it could fluctuate. Now, the, you know, Italy might um, try to stabilize the lira relative to the franc by using their monetary policy, but uh, to some extent the lira would float against the franc. So that raises the question, well, what's optimum for a currency area? Did, what, was Europe better off when the Italian lira and the French franc were separate currencies, or were they better off with the common euro? Uh, <coughs> now, as a tourist, I think it's, it's certainly easier to use uh, just one currency when you can travel to many countries, and there would seem to be some advantages of a common currency. A disadvantage it comes when the, there's a need for economic adjustment and prices have to change. So when, you know, if the Italian economy starts being less productive, than the French economy. So there's lower productivity. That means that wages need to fall rel in Italy relative to France. Then you can have problems because the easiest way to get Italian wages to fall relative to French wages would be to have the relative currencies adjust, to have the lira become weak relative to the franc. So when you need your relative wage to fall, having the currency fall makes it easy, relatively easy, somewhat easy, than having to go to workers and say, cut your wages easier than going to workers and saying <coughs> cut your wages. So that would suggest, well, maybe um, you know, there shouldn't be one currency. We need multiple currencies. So when, when does it, so when do you not need, might be a way of putting it, when do you, when do you not need separate currencies? And some of the things that you look for would be integrated labor markets. So if there's a decline in, in labor demand in California relative to Texas, we'll see migration of workers from California to Texas. <coughs> but if there's a decline in labor demand in Italy 
robe to, to France, <coughs> you won't get, get much migration. You know, there's a language barrier. There's cultural barriers. There are all sorts of reasons why you won't get as much migration from Italy to France as you do from California to Texas. So, uh, <coughs> excuse me. So, integrated labor markets help make for an optimum currency area, and the U.S. our our labor markets are relatively more integrated than they are in Europe. And in fact, this was a big reason that when the euro was created, a l number of prominent economists were very skeptical that the euro would work because they said that the labor markets were not integrated. Um, another story is, what's called a common fiscal authority. So the U.S. has a federal budget. So if um, once, let's say if Michigan needs assistance, there will be, there may be some transfer of federal money from other <coughs> from other states. It's say or from people in other states. I mean it's not a big deal, it's not a lot, but it's there <coughs> and um, so far at least we haven't had an entire state go bankrupt. But in Europe, in the case of Greece, Greece cannot say, <coughs> well, let's have some federal assistance. I mean, what they can get is, they can get some unilateral assistance. Let's say Germany can give them money, or there are some, uh, some financial institutions that Europe has been creating on an ad hoc basis to try to channel aid to Greece, but it really, uh, it, it's not as uh, straightforward as doing it in the United States. So a common fiscal authority is something else that you seem to need to have an optimal currency area, and it's something that's missing in Europe. So this issue of an optimal currency area, or a non-optimal currency area, has really become prominent in recent months, and so there are people who are arguing that the euro has to break up because some countries, so some European countries have had, have uh, <coughs> low productivity, so some euro countries have low productivity, and so they need currency depreciation <coughs> others like Germany are running large trade surpluses so their currency should appre should appreciate that is they their currency should get stronger so that their uh, trade surplus narrows so they're not running such big trade surpluses so um, so we've got some countries in effect <coughs> saying the euro should go down and then other countries that are also on the euro and their economic data suggests that the euro value should go up. And it obviously it can't do both. And so that's another, just another way of saying that the euro is not looking like an optimal currency area these days. 
and there's going to be I don't know actually how this is going to be resolved there are, there are people who predict that the euro will break up that um, we will see a northern euro and a southern euro or that they'll go back to individual currencies we're in the middle of <coughs> the euro crisis as I say this and um, you know some people think that the solution is to go back to this you know create a common fiscal authority or strengthen the international the uh, multinational institutions <coughs> that can uh, try to transfer funds between countries but that won't solve the problem of relative wage prob wages um, and that is there's there's no way there's no quick fix for an integrated labor market and so if the problem is if, if the ultimate solution in Europe requires an integrated labor market to make the euro work then the euro just is not going to work so um, I think that's kind of where I come down I, I don't think that the euro uh, is going to work well uh, so what is going to happen I think is the I, I don't think anyone wants to make the euro go away and I think if if Greece walks away from the euro then they won't be able to borrow money to fund their government and so that'll be a total disaster so I think the weaker countries are not going to want to walk away from the euro and it's the stronger countries where the if the populations get tired of transferring money <coughs> to the weaker countries I mean the story is that uh, people can retire in Greece at a younger age than in Germany and that makes Germans not so excited about paying taxes and working longer so they can support the Greeks in their early retirement and so at some point the politics in countries like Germany or Finland may be such that they want to exit the euro because the price that has to be paid for keeping the euro together is too much in terms of transferring uh, income from Germany to Greece and Italy and other countries and at some point the the, <coughs> the populations in, dem in democratic countries like Germany and Finland will be so fed up with this that they'll leave the euro but I really don't know how that's going to turn out as I say I'm talking about this in the middle of the crisis the point is when it comes to the notion of an optimal currency area there clearly are gaps between the situation in Europe and what you would need for an optimal currency area. The labor markets are not integrated and there's no common fiscal authority and we're seeing both of those problems at work today.